Okay, this is a video for the Section 1114 study guide. I know I put 14. It's mainly 14 in Math Nation. Um, there's one topic, which is from 11, which is area of the regular polygons. But anyways, so for your upcoming test. Study tip, please redo the problems from the packet. So like when you're practicing this, you want to try practice problems again. You want to make sure you read everything and make sure you understood what's being asked, things like that. Um, particularly, you want to focus on the volume and area formulas. You've got to know those formulas for area. They're not going to be on the formula sheet. The volume formulas they give you on your formula sheet are very basic. So um, you have to know what the B means and what the um, area formula for that particular shape's base is going to be. So whenever you're studying for math test again, you want to make sure you're reworking problems. So don't just read through and be like, I got it. You want to try to cover up some of the answers of work that you did and try it on another sheet to make sure you understand some of the things that you didn't necessarily get the first time. So in the formulas, um, you can go ahead and write these in. I'm just going to pause this. Well, I'll go ahead and write it in while I'm doing this, but I'm going to do it fast. You can pause it, slow it down if you need to. One half base times height. 1 half height, base 1 plus base 2, base times height, base times height, 1 half diagonal 1 times diagonal 2, S squared, so it's side squared, and pi R squared. Okay, then for prisms, the volume is capital BH. For cylinders, it's the same volume, but because the base is always a circle for cylinders, so we can just use the pi R squared H formula. So these are the same formula with the B plugged in as pi r squared. Pyramids use the same formula as the cones and um, prisms and cylinders, but with one third in front. Again, the cones base is always going to be a circle, so you can just use this formula. And then four thirds pi r cubed. All right. So those are our formulas. The prism, if the prism is a triangular prism, triangular, sorry, triangular prism, it's going to be one half base times height is the capital B part times the H, uh, which is the height of the prism. So these H's are different, they're not the same. If it was a rectangular prism, you're going to use BH times H. Again, H's are not the same. So for the prism, depending on the base shape, your formula that you're using for the B, you're going to be borrowing one of these formulas from area, depending on if it's a triangle or trapezoid or whatever the shape is. So that's the B that you really need to understand what that B means. It's super crucial. It doesn't just mean the base of one dimension of something, like this side would be a base in the two-dimensional figure. When you're doing volume, it does not mean that same B. It's, a it's an area formula. You're going to put one of these full area formulas in for the B. All right. Then going to this first problem, which shape results from rotating the figure around the axis shown? So this um, here would create a curved surface, a flat surface of a circle, and then it would make a cone. With this would be the radius, and this would be the height. So it's a cone. This one, if I rotate it around the axis, this part again is going to make that circular piece. And then there's actually going to be this like what looks like a gap. So it's going to be almost as if you had a cone missing from a, a cylinder. Okay. And this one, if you rotate it around the axis, it's going to make oops, a cylinder. So this one again is a, a cylinder. Oops with a cone cut out. So the cone part would be missing from the cylinder. And this one would just be a regular cylinder. So when you're doing a study guide, please don't just write down what I'm writing. There's no grade for this study guide. You want to try these, and then when you get stuck, you want to um, go back and look at how I did these versus just watching me do it, that's not helpful for you to actually like learn it. Okay, but again, if you get stuck or you want to see explanation for something, this is a good tool. What's the difference in the volume of the cylinders? The volume of a cylinder, if we go back up here, is pi r squared h, or bh. This is already telling us the area of the base. So they're actually giving us the area 
because it's already an inches squared. So this is not the radius, this is not the diameter, it's already the full area of the bottom. So we're just needing to multiply that area, which was four times the height. So the volume for the Coke can would be 20 cubic inches. If I just multiply four times five, the capital B times H. So again, I'm using this formula. They've already given us the capital B and they've given us the H. So we just multiply these numbers. The volume for the water bottle is going to be 5 times 10, which is 50. So the difference in the volumes is 30 cubic inches. We just subtract 50 minus 20. Find the capacity of air in the house that, um, that the following households below. So capacity is just fancy for volume. How much space is it taking up? How much space is the air occupying? So really what you should recognize on this is that there are two different volumes. So instead of doing a composite area, we've done some composite areas, we're going to be doing a composite volume. So we're going to be doing the volume of the rectangular prism. Rectangular, I don't know why I'm struggling with that word. Prism. And we're going to be adding to it the volume of the triangular prism on the top. They're both prisms, so our capital, our formula is capital B H for both. But for the rectangle, the base of the rectangle would be this side. The area of this side is 8 times 5, or 40. And the height of the prism is 6, it's here. Versus the triangle, the area of the triangle would be the base. The area of the triangle is 1 half base. So 8 is the base times the height of 4. So half of 32, or 16, would be the area of this triangle. And timesing it by the height of the prism is the distance between the two triangles, so this 5. Okay. So again, these Bs aren't any one dimension on this paper. You have to shade in and find the area of that particular figure. So 4 times 6 is 2184, so 240. 5 times 16 is 80. 32 plus 8, I mean, eight, 24 plus 8 is 32 with an extra 0. Okay, so that would be the capacity of the house. Find the volume of the trough. So this is a prism because it's got the same two dimensions here. And it's a trapezoidal prism. So we're going to be finding the vo volume of a trapezoidal or a trapezoid prism, which would be the prism volume is VH, the area of the trapezoid is one half of the height, which they're telling us is four. Base 1 is 6, because this is 6, they're the same length, and 5. Okay, so you're going to get the area of the trapezoid first. So half of 4 is 2 times 11, 22, times the height of the prism, which is the distance between trapezoids, which is 8. So 22 times 8 is going to be 176 for the volume for part A. If the trough is emptied until the water is even with the mid-segments of the trapezoidal ends, how much water is left in the trough? So the only thing that's different in this is if the water is equal to the mid-segment, it means that this is all halfway up. Okay, so the water is now where the blue lines are. <clears throat> So when we're doing the area of the trapezoid, we're going to change the height to be half of that, so 2, because we're using it only for the blue water line. So this height is 2. The base 1 is still 5, so this base didn't change at all. It's still 5. The other base, though, it's the trapezoid mid-segment is the average of these, so if it's between 5 and 6, halfway between 5 and 6 is 5.5 units long. 
So 5.5 would be the half of 2 is 1. So 1 times 10.5 is just going to be 10.5. So the volume for the trapezoid is going to be 10.5 so times the height is still the distance between the two trapezoids. And moving the so uh, 80, eight, 10 times 8 would be 80 plus um, 0.5 times 8 which would be 2, 82. Let me check my math. 84. Oh, four, yeah, 84, that makes sense. 84 for this would be the volume. Half of 8 would be 4, so 4 plus 80, that's right. Okay, so that's part B. If I went through any of that too fast, just pause it, try to find that area of the trapezoid by yourself to get the B in the formula, and then you can keep going and solve it. Okay, hemisphere, which is half of a sphere, has a radius of... radius of 14 inches. The hemisphere is filled with water and then emptied. So it's only really half of the sphere, so this part is filled with water. There's nothing on the top. Okay, there's really not even, it's not even there technically. So for doing the volume formula for a sphere, we'll need to cut it in half. So that means multiplying by one half, which is the same thing as dividing by two. So really our volume formula is going to be 4, 6, because I multiply 4 times 1, so 4, and 3 times 2, so 6, pi r cubed. The hemisphere is filled with water and then emptied into a cylindrical tank. So a cylindrical tank with a diameter of 16. How high would the water rise? So the same amount of water that was in the half sphere is in the cylinder. So once you get the volume of the half sphere, you use that volume in the cylinder and solve for h. So if we plug in 4, 6 pi r was 14 cubed. All right, I can't do that in my head. So 14 cubed means we're going to zoom out. Cubed means I'm going to hit second one. That's the cubed. Times 4 divided by pi equals... 14 times 4 divided by 6 is what I meant to type, times pi. Multiplication is commutative. I can go in any order I want, but everything in the numerator, all these things are going to be multiplied, and this 6 is going to be divided. So the volume is like 5747.02. I rounded it on my paper, but I'm just leaving it exact in my calculator. So the volume for the cylinder is the same. And on this one, it equals pi bh, which the b is pi, is a circle, so it's pi r squared. h, and we know the volume. We're just going to be taking this. The radius will be 8, and we're looking for the height. So I'm going to start off dividing this by pi. squaring the 8, then dividing it by 64. The height would round, or would raise to about 28.6 inches. Okay, um, divided by 6 times pi, I'm just checking my work. Okay, so this would be, because I didn't get a whole number here, I'm not sure, right? I think I probably made these numbers up. So, <clears throat> dividing this by pi, 
And I'll put it in parentheses. I can divide by 64 times pi if I put it in parentheses. Yep, so that's at 28.6. On the test, it should tell you um, if it's not it, what's around to if it's not a whole number. So that's why I'm like, uh, why didn't I put it on there? But it's okay. A cylinder with a radius is of four centimeters. It's placed inside another cylinder with a radius of six six centimeters. If the height of both of them is 10 centimeters, what is the amount of space, which is volume, between them? So we need to find the volume of the cylinder with the 4 inch, or the small cylinder, and the volume of the large, and then we just take the difference. I'm going to leave them in terms of pi. It's easier just to solve in terms of pi. So this would be VH, which in this case B is a circle, so I put pi r squared h for most formulas. One of the radius were, were 6, the small one was 4, times the height. 16 times 10 is 160 pi. Thirty-six times ten, which is three hundred and sixty pi. So the amount of space between them would be two hundred pi if we subtract. Okay. So if I do two hundred times pi to get my answer to the nearest tenth, it would be six hundred and twenty-eight point three um, cubic centimeters. Okay, quite a bit of space between them. Okay, a pyramid with an equilateral triangular base. <clears throat> Has a volume of, so they're giving us a volume already. And a height, so the height straight up from the pyramid, which is very difficult for me to draw is 8 centimeters. Find the length of each side of the equilateral triangle. So we know that the volume formula for a triangular pyramid is going to be 1 third capital BH. The base is a triangle, so I need to figure out what the area of the triangle is. I'm going to get it in terms of the side, because that's what I'm looking for anyways, sides. So. If I get the area in terms of S, then I will only have one variable to solve for and one more step after I get the side and the area. So if I redraw this, it's an equilateral triangle, so they're all the same side. When I cut an equilateral triangle, they're all 60s, so this is a 30 degree angle because they were both 60 before. So it's a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. The side across from the 90 is S. This is an S, and these are not S. These are not fives or S's. This is it S? So the short leg would be S divided by 2, which makes sense because if we cut this in half, it gives us this length. And the, long, the height would be S divided by 2 radical 3. Okay, so the area of this triangle would be 1 half the base, so 1 half S. times the height, which is s over 2 radical 3. Simplifying that, I get the square root of 3 is the only number on the numerator, so the square root of 3 over 2 times 2 on the denominator, so 4, and s squared. So the area is equal to the square root of 3 over 4 s squared. So I'm plugging all of that in for my area formula. And then times it by the height, which they told us was 8. 
Okay, it looks really messy here, but we can solve 2 times 4 is 8, divided by 8. Sorry, 8 divided by 8 is going to be just... Um, 8 divided by 8 is just going to be 1. Okay, the reason I'm hesitating is because these will cancel out. So I just have the square root of 3 s squared equals 24 radical 3. Okay, and then dividing both sides by radical 3. It's not a perfect square. It should have been a perfect square. So s squared, the s is the 90, so the s over 2 is the 30, and s over 2 radical 3 is the 60. So 1 half base times height. Okay, that's right. And then when I square root this, I get the um, simplified version of this and equal in simplified radical form, this is breaking down to 4 times 6, so it's 2 radical 6 is one side. Okay, I can check my work because I'm a little skeptical um, of it. Oh, you know what it is? It's that I wrote a 3 here and a 2 here. Bummer. So that's going to just change. Actually, doesn't change anything about this. 8. 8 over 12, so this will be 8 over 12. Okay, I'm going to redo this part, sorry. So for the volume, we got the area was radical 3 over 4, S squared, 8 equals 24 radical 3. Simplifying this, I get 8 radical 3 on the numerator divided by 12 and then s squared. So basically you can move this 8 to the front because 8 times 1 is 8, radical 3 still is there, and then the 12 on this part. So 24 radical 3. Then to get rid of the 12, I can multiply both sides by 12. So 24 times 12 gives me 288 radical 3 equals 8 radical 3 s squared. Dividing both sides by 8, I get 36 radical 3 equals radical 3 s squared. Dividing both sides by radical 3, those cancel. So s squared equals 36, so s is 6. That makes more sense. Okay. So the side is 6. Sorry about that, the 2 there. This is what I want you to do on your test if you make a mistake. I don't want to be guessing which is the right work, which is the right work. So if you make a mistake, you want to cross out or erase. I'm not, you know, I wrote a pen, so fully, fully erase what was wrong. That would be very helpful. Okay, so <coughs> number eight, a chunk of metal is dropped into a container of water and rises two centimeters. So we did one similar to this, if not this exact one. I think we did this exact one on our. So originally have a. a amount of water. Then when the chunk of metal is dropped in, the amount rises by two centimeters. So basically if we can find the volume of the displaced water, that's going to be the volume of the metal. So the volume of the displaced water is, this is a cylinder, so it's going to be BH and the b is pi r squared because it's an area of a circle. The radius is 4, the height is 2 because it's rising 2. So the only part that was the 2 difference from the original water level to the new water level is becoming is coming because this metal pushed out the water, pushed up the water. So that's why the the volume of the metal is equal to the displaced water. When we get that, 16 times 2, 32 pi. So the density is equal to mass over volume, and the mass was 60 grams, and the volume was 32 pi. 
So the nearest tenth would be 60 divided by, I can put this in parentheses, so it's just a little parentheses there, 32 times pi, and it gives me to the nearest tenth, 0.6. Yeah, this is the same one for my work. It'd be good to have gotten the right, see if you can do it, because we did this before. Okay, the next one, the density is given of silver, and you have a solid silver cylinder. Solid silver cylinder. Hmm. Don't twist it. With a radius of 2 and a height of 7. How much does it weigh? So for density, we know it's related to weight because it's mass over volume. We know the density. We're looking for the mass. And because we have a cylinder of it, we can figure out the volume. So the volume for a cylinder, BH or pi r squared h, is pi 2 squared times 7. 4 times 7 is 28 pi. I thought we also did this one. Yeah, we did. Okay, so volume 28 pi, and then so the density, which was 4.62, is equal to the mass, which we're looking for, over the volume. Twenty-eight times pi times four point six two is four oh six for x. In grams. The units have to work out. So this this density is in grams per centimeters cubed. The weight is going to be in grams, and the volume was in centimeters cubed because I did centimeters times centimeters for radius times height of centimeters, so it's centimeters cubed. So the grams over centimeters cubed matches on both sides. So we're good. Okay. What's the relationship between the volume of a cylinder, cone, and sphere with a height equal to 2R in all congruent radius? Okay, so the volume of a cylinder is BH. The volume of a cone is one-third BH. And the volume of a sphere is four-thirds pi R cubed. Okay, because it's a cylinder, we want these to kind of have the same variables in them so we can compare easily. Um, the cylinder is going to have the area of a circle for the B, and so will the cone. The cone and the cylinder both have circular bases. Okay, so it's pretty clear to, clear to see what the relationship between these two formulas is. And then Right now, we have R and no H on this formula. We have H's in this formula. So we want to get rid of the H's by substituting in two R's. Two R for the H. Okay, so if I simplify this, I can put the two in the front, pi, and then I have R squared times R, which is R cubed. So that's the volume for the cylinder. This is the cone, this is the sphere. This one, if I multiply 2 times 1 third, I get 2 thirds pi r cubed. And this one's already in the right form. So if I wanted to relate these three, I would say that the cone the cone is equal to half of a sphere, or two cones equals a sphere. So we could say two cones equals a sphere. And then the cylinder is three times larger than the cone. So if I multiplied this by three, it would get rid of the three on the denominator, and I'd have two pi r cubed, which is what this is. So three cones equals a cylinder. Okay, so two cones is a sphere, three cones is a cylinder. You could also have written it as sphere equals, half a sphere equals one cone. It's the same thing as this. So taking this and cutting it in half, dividing the four by two gives you two thirds. Or a third of the cylinder is the cone. And then if I want to relate the sphere and the cylinder, this, um, to get 
from 2 to 4 here, I'd have to multiply by 2 on the denominator and divide by 3. So this is 2 thirds, this is um, the cylinder times 2 thirds would get me the sphere. So 2 thirds of the cylinder would equal the sphere. Okay, so that's how you can relate them. Those are just some of the different ways you can write it. What is the horizontal and vertical cross section of the following? So the horizontal cross section, I mean the vertical cross section, it doesn't specify if you're cutting it vertically this way or this way, but I did assume this. So if you just draw it on there, with your, um, if I slice this vertically through the um, figure, I would see a triangle. And if I slice this horizontally, through the figure, take off the top, I would see a rectangle. What is the population density of a school if there are 3,000 students, that's the amount of people, we're looking for the density, on a plot of land that is 120 by 70 yards with a building height of 15 feet. So. We actually don't care how tall the building is because population density is people pp, people over, I was going to spell people out, but I've already read it, over the area. So the density would be 3,000 people divided by, um, the area would be 120 by 70. Okay, so if we do that. Uh, 3,000 divided by 120 times 70. So the density hmm. there's only 0.35, so it's not even a full person for per square yard. I think what they probably did is got it in feet in the um, book. Yeah, that way it's actually a full person. But right now, the population density in yards would just be you can't even have 0.35 people. So, just for the sake of this, it's um, yeah, it's okay to have this as a density, even though there's going to be a, a whole number of people. Um, people per square yard. Okay. 